Hello, this is the second of our two videos on linear regression and what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at how you can partition the variance in a bivariate data set on the basis of a linear regression and how you can use that to construct an ANOVA table and use that to carry out a statistical hypothesis test to see whether or not the line you've fitted is significantly different from one with a slope of zero. Before we go any further, I should say that I'm expecting that you've already become familiar with partitioning variance for a normal ANOVA. Um, if you're not familiar with how this works, then you need to go back and revisit the video on partitioning variance in ANOVA. Otherwise, you're going to find some parts of this quite difficult to follow. OK, so let's just remind ourselves of the data set we were looking at in the previous video. These are data on below ground net primary productivity. Um, as related to the relative biomass of grass. So on the x-axis, we have essentially the proportion of all the biomass that's taken up by grass as opposed to any other kind of plant. And on the y-axis, we have the below ground primary productivity for a set of plots in China. And as we saw in the previous video, we've got a strong negative relationship between these two variables. And in the previous video, we calculated what the best fit line for these data was. And that best fit line is y equals 215 minus 1.68 times x. So our intercept is 215 and our slope is minus 1.68. The question we want to look at now is how we can do a statistical test to see whether or not that relationship is different from a relationship where the slope of the line would be zero. And there are two ways in which we can do this. One way, which you might be familiar with already, is to calculate the standard error for the slope of the line, which is calculated using this moderately scary formula here. And once you calculate the standard error for the slope of the line, what you can do is you can divide the slope by that standard error. And if the null hypothesis that the slope is zero is correct, that value should be distributed on a t distribution with n minus two degrees of freedom. So you can do a t test to see if your slope is significantly different from zero. Um, we're not gonna do that today. What we're gonna do is look at the other way of assessing this, which is via partitioning variance. And the reason why we're gonna be looking at partitioning variance for a regression is because I want you to see how linear regression and ANOVA are really very, very similar forms of analysis. Um, and in fact, they are both different components of the same kind of analysis, the general linear model. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna partition the variance in our response variable, in our Y variable, into the variance that we can explain with our line and the variance that we can't explain. So let's start by just thinking about the total variance in our y variable. What I've calculated here is the overall mean of y, and I've drawn in the distance from each data point to that value. And if you want to calculate the overall variance, then we would simply subtract that mean from each data point, square the value that we get for each one, and add them all together. And that will give us the sum of squares for y or the total sum of squares for y. If we want to calculate the variance, particularly we divide by the degrees of freedom. But because this is a variance partitioning exercise, we're just going to take the sum of squares. So that gives us the total sum of squares in just the same way as you get with an ANOVA. What about the error sum of squares? Well, in an ANOVA, to calculate the error sum of squares, you would calculate the mean for each group in the data. We're not doing that here, but what we are doing is calculating a predicted value for each data point. And we're calculating that predicted value from our, from our line that we fitted. So the error sum of squares or the error variance is gonna be the amount of dispersion around the fitted line, as opposed to the total variance, which is the amount of dispersion around the grand mean for the data set. So the error variance can be calculated by taking the sum of squares when you subtract the predicted value from each y variable, as opposed to for an ANOVA, where you would calculate the error sum of squares using the group means for each group that you're comparing. 
So it's just like ANOVA in that you can partition your variance into your total sum of squares, your error sum of squares, and your treatment sum of squares, where the treatment sum of squares represents the variance that's explained by your statistical model. And in this case, your statistical model is a fitted straight line. As with an ANOVA, we do our calculations using the sums of squares rather than with the actual variances. And we do this for the same reason, which is that the sums of squares are additive. So if we know the error sum of squares and the total sum of squares, we can calculate the treatment sum of squares. Or if we know the treatment sum of squares and the total sum of squares, we can calculate the error sum of squares. The total sum of squares, as with ANOVA, is calculated with the grand mean for our y variable. Um, and we subtract each, we subtract that from each data point, square them and add them together. The error sum of squares, as we've seen, is calculated from the predicted values. The predicted value for each data point is subtracted from the actual data point. We square the result and then we add all of those together to give us the error sum of squares. And then we calculate the treatment sum of squares from the total sum of squares minus the error sum of squares. So let's do that for our data. Um, I'm not going to do the calculations by hand because that would take a long time, but I've done it in R. So first of all, we're calculating the sum of our y variables, uh, the sum of all the data points in our y variable minus the mean for the y variable. And that gives us the total sum of squares, which in this case is 50,214.77. We then calculate the predicted value for each of our data points. And we're doing that, sorry, and we're doing that with this line of code here, which is calculating the predicted value for each data point. And we then calculate the error sum of squares using that predicted value. So you can see we're subtracting the predicted values from the actual values, squaring each one, and then using the sum function to add them all together. And this gives us our error sum of squares. And then finally, we've got the treatment sum of squares which is calculated by subtracting the total by subtracting the error sum of squares sorry from the total sum of squares and that value is 36150.07 so once we've calculated those sums of squares we can use them to build an ANOVA table in exactly the same way that we would build an ANOVA table if we were doing a single factor ANOVA so much of this should be familiar to you we've got the same entries in the table. We've got the source of variance. We've got the degrees of freedom, the sums of squares, the mean squares. We're going to calculate an F statistic. And then on that basis, we're going to calculate a P value. So what are the degrees of freedom? Well, as before, the degrees of freedom for our total sum of squares are N minus one. And that's 23 because we've got 24 data points in total. The degrees of freedom for our error sums of squares in this particular for, for a, a model with a linear regression is n minus 2. So that value will be 22. And then the degrees, the treatment degrees of freedom for a linear regression are just one. So we have one degree of freedom for our treatment sum of squares. We know what the sums of squares are, so we can fill those in. And then we can calculate the mean squares in exactly the same way as we calculate the mean squares for an ANOVA. So the mean squares are equal to the sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. So mean square treatment is 36,115. Mean square error is 14,065 divided by 22, which is 639.3. Now that we've got the mean square treatment and the mean square error, we can calculate our F statistic, the test statistic that we use to calculate the p-value. And the F statistic is of course equal to the treatment mean squares divided by the error mean squares, 36,150 over 639.3, which is equal to 56.55. And then having calculated that F statistic, we know that if the null hypothesis is true, we would expect that value to be distributed on an F distribution on one and 22 degrees of freedom. So we can just ask R what the probability of getting a value as big or bigger than 56.55 is on an F distribution with one and 22 degrees of freedom? And the answer is a very small number indeed, 1.623 times 10 to the minus seven. So our p-value 
is 0.0000162. That's a very small number indeed. So we've got a highly significant linear regression. Of course, as always, we don't usually calculate an ANOVA table for our linear regression by hand. What we usually do is we ask some software to calculate it for us, and we're going to ask R to calculate an ANOVA table for this linear regression for us. This is the code that we use. So I've fitted a model called mod1, which is just a linear regression model, and then I've used the ANOVA function to bring up the ANOVA table. And what you can see is that give or take a few things at the fourth or fifth significant figure, which are a consequence of rounding error, the values in our ANOVA table are the same as the values that R has calculated and given us in an ANOVA table. Um, the only things that are really different are that the error sum are that the errors are described as residuals uh, by R, and there isn't there isn't a row for the total sum of squares. Um, but the total sums of squares aren't particularly relevant in this case. So hopefully that's shown you how the ANOVA table that R produces for a linear regression is calculated. And now we're just going to summarize. So when we do a linear regression, we can partition the variance in just the same way as we do with an ANOVA. And we can partition the variance into the error variance, which is what remains unexplained after we fitted our line to the data, and the treatment variance, which is the amount of variance in the data that is actually explained by our regression model. Once we've, once we've partitioned this variance, we can construct an ANOVA table and perform an F-test to give us a statistical test for the null hypothesis that the slope of the line is equal to zero. And the whole process is very, very similar to the way we calculate a single factor ANOVA. 